Hey everyone, what's going on? Rob from Captain Rob Games here, and today we're going to be talking about how True Talent played against a competitive team a couple games in a row, Oracle, uh, while playing <laughs> the Wraith. You guys can guess how that went, I'm sure. So I'm going to be talking about his build, uh, his kind of idea behind how his, his playstyle was going to be, and then the results of it. So first game... We'll go over real quick. He was running Ruin plus Pop, a lot of heavy gen regression. He was running Thanophobia, expecting to keep people injured for further gen regression, and also Corrupt Intervention. So a very anti-generator build, but it requires you um, to kind of get some productivity with injures and downs. He was running the All-Seeing Blood, which allows you to see survivors that are within 12 meters of you when you are cloaked. This actually got him a lot of value when he was playing in certain jungle gyms and certain loops. And he was running the purple variant, I don't have that, of Windstorm, which uh, considerably increases the Wraith's movement speed while cloaked. Um, now here's the thing, he went in there thinking that this was going to kind of work out, and it's a good build. This would actually be a very strong build in a pub lobby, but competitive teams versus Wraith, this just isn't really how it goes, you know? He got one down near the end of the game. It was under a pallet, and they did successfully get the pallet save. Um, if you guys want to watch this yourself, I'll put a link in the bottom. Dowsy actually commented over it um, the, the entirety of three games, I believe. The first game, he ended with zero hooks. Which is, and this might be controversial for some, and it's not controversial, but it might feel controversial to you. Um, that's the expected. He got zero hooks in his first game, and yeah, wow. It was kind of a dumpster fire. Um, the flashlight player kept trying to light burn him. They had a player that was built for protection hit build, so he couldn't ever finish the survivor once he got him injured. It was just kind of a dumpster fire. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about game two next. Okay, for game two, he made some slight adjustments. First things first, you will notice that he switched out Thanophobia with Nurse's Calling. He was recognizing that they were healing pretty quickly. He wanted to have some additional information, maybe catch someone off guard. He also did a complete change on his add-ons. Instead of running Movement Speed and Vision, he chose to run Tremendously Reduces the Time Required to break pallets and walls and kick generators and stuff, and he ran the Serpent. So when a player drops the pallet, which is common on Wraith, you wait till they finish the bell and then you pre-drop the pallet, because pallets are basically meaningless in competitive. Your teammates are burning generators so quickly that you can just pre-drop every single pallet and keep running, and you will just win the game. Because it's silly when you rush when you rush gens, you just get them done and you win the game like that. So his strategy then was okay. They drop pallet pre-drop. I break it and instantly start chasing them a little bit closer, almost like when a Bubba breaks a pallet. So he made a little bit of an adjustment, still running pop, despite the fact that he got no hooks first game. That was interesting. Uh, the result of this game, he actually got four hooks and he got a kill in this game, which was kind of crazy. Um, he got zero pop value. He got a little bit of value out of Nurse's Calling. He also got a, a moderate amount of value out of Corrupt Intervention and Ruin. All in all, it was a much better game, but it was still a very one-sided affair um, on the survivor side. And after this game ended, and this is something that I want you to listen to very carefully because this is a key piece of information, the competitive team said this is an unacceptable result and that they wanted to play again. They said a Wraith in competitive should get zero hooks. I just want to be entirely clear. That is what the competitive team said. The survivor team said in a competitive match, the Wraith should get zero hooks and zero kills. That's what they said. They said that that means that they played horrifically bad that game. And I think this is kind of, this is kind of eye-opening for a lot of people who might not be familiar with competitive Dead by Daylight and how Dead by Daylight is at the top rank. At top rank of play, this game is a 100% survivor favoring clown fiesta. At high level play, killers, it is a nightmare to keep up with survivors. The game is heavily favoring survivors. Even with the perk requirements, where basically they nerf what perks you can run and you can't really bring a lot of the strongest stuff, you can't double down and all four bring the strongest perks. 
even in these situations, there are still only two viable killers that can consistently perform, and then there's two or three other killers that can kind of perform. So just to give people an idea, the fact that True Talent got four kills, excuse me, four downs and one kill, that's considered a, like, very impressive feat for the Wraith. So let's go to game three. Okay, game three, True Talent decided he liked his build. He ran the same build. Again, I would have liked to see Pop Goes the Weasel get switched to something else. It was not getting him value. He might not have had time to kind of dig through perks and figure out a better perk, but he got zero Pop value in all three of his games. Should have made an adjustment in my opinion, but whatever. Um, this game, he managed to get two hooks, no kills. Again, another kind of expected Wraith performance. But even then, after the game, the uh, the team Oracle re like restated, Wraith should not be getting any hooks. Any hooks against a competitive team. Kind of goes to show. So that's kind of how that experiment went. Uh, there is one last thing that I want to talk about. Um, I'm kind of unclear on the whole like hate boner relationship that some of the community has been having with true it kind of just blows my mind um this is just my personal opinion but if you start to build an identity around hating a person or strongly disliking a person that's weird you know like that that's weird like weird 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 so if you don't like someone don't watch them. If you think that they're arrogant or you don't like their content, just don't go watch content that has them in it. If you're watching someone's content and freaking out about it, and then you feel the need to post hurtful things or negative things or like just ridiculously cruel things for no reason, especially on other content creators like Twitches or YouTube, you're weird. Like that, that's, that's weird. Like that's not normal human behavior that's just really weird so i just kind of want to put that out there like don't develop an identity around being negative don't develop an identity around hating content creators it's just again really weird so please stop that like it's giving the dead by daylight community a really bad name i'm sure a lot of you have plenty of like very positive personality traits and things that could be focused on instead of focusing on like making your personality about having a hate boner for a content creator. But I'll get off my soapbox now. Just stop being weird, guys. That's all I ask. Anyway, that's going to end this video. Yeah, it's Wraith, dude. Like, this is what should have happened. And the fact that True Talent even got a kill as Wraith in one game is so insane. It, it means, one, that he played well enough to get a kill against the tournament team, which is not easy when they're playing like a tournament team so hats off to him for pulling that one off i know oracle said they had a bad game it happens to all of us really cool stuff hope you guys enjoyed this content if you did make sure to hit that like button make sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time